Now let's learn how to do the area between curves. Now before we start, you're probably reading this right here. So I like this. Hi darling, here's my ATM card. Da, da, da. Here's my pin code for my card. And it's just some complicated integral. In case you're wondering what it is, I just figured it out. So uh, hey, this is this integral. I'm assuming then the pin number must be like 2582, I suppose. Uh, but uh, there you go. I, I guess that's something you can do to someone. <laughs> that's a bit mean. So, okay, how do I find the area between two curves? Well, we got to draw some curves. So, I don't know, maybe I'll draw myself some function that does this. Maybe this will be my, maybe I'll call that f of x. And I have to have another curve. Maybe I'll draw it in uh, green. And I'll call this one here, maybe. I don't know. So here maybe it'll be like g of x. So some curvy thing and some other curvy thing. Well, the area between them is going to be from here to here. It's going to be like this area enclosed here. It's going to be this, this area right here. That looks really complicated, doesn't it? But good news, it's actually really easy to do with calculus. In fact, we can do this by hand. This is not hard at all. It looks crazy, but it's not hard at all. Here's a trick. First of all, we have to find out where do those two graphs intersect. Those are your points A, and this is your point B. So that's what those will tell you. Okay, So A and B will be told by where those two things intersect. So first step, you should probably figure out where, where do they intersect. That's important. All right, which graph is above which? See, do you notice in this region right here, do you see that f of x is above g of x? And what I'm going to do then is use this property here. We're going to say that the area is, let me put it in blue here. So the area is just going to be equal to this. It's going to be the integral from A to B, of course, from start to the finish, of, let's say, the upper function minus the lower function. So whatever those are. So these will change depending on the situation. Whatever is the upper one minus the lower one. And then we're going to do that integral. So in this case, in this particular case, I would say the area then would be, well, between A and B. Which one is above which? In this region right here, it's f of x that's above g of x, isn't it? Like this blue one is above the green one. So because of that, I would say it's f of x minus g of x. That I would evaluate. I would figure out that dx. So that's why I would figure out which one is above which, because that's why I would do the integral from A to B. Of, I'll just write it down again so you can have it clear. So upper minus the lower one. That's it. Let's learn how to do this by hand then. Let's, let's do one of these without a calculator. So we'll do this one here like this. <laughs> Break time. So let's find the area enclosed between these two graphs right here. So I'm going to try to do it without a calculator, just to show you that we can. Uh, well, I mean, I like to do sketches if I can. You didn't even need, well, I guess it helps to have a sketch because you do need to figure out where they meet. But uh, that we can do without a calculator. What does x squared look like? That looks like something like this, maybe. That would be x squared. And what does 2x look like? 2x looks like, uh, I mean, it's a straight line through the origin with a gradient of 2. So I don't know, something like, something like that, maybe. I'm just, uh, I mean, it's not really to scale because I haven't put numbers there. It doesn't matter. So 2x. So what did I need to find first? First, I need to know where do these two things meet? You see that? Where do they meet? So that'll be my first step is where, where do they intersect? Okay, so intersection. What well, does it make sense? The first one is at x equals 0. So that's the first one. That's good. Where's the other one, though? Well, I could set the two equations equal to each other and see what I get. So I got x squared equals 2x. That's where they meet, right? Right up here. Where do they meet? Well, I could then uh, divide by x both sides. So I end up with x equals 2. And then, hey, wait a second, I'm done already. Do you notice that? Because if I divide by x here, maybe I went too fast. I just want to show you this. So if I go x squared over x equals 2. See, I just divided by x to get rid of it. And x squared over x is just x. So I end up with x over 2. Oh, sorry, x equals 2, I mean. So that's actually good news for us because that helps us to know what to do here. Now I know my bounds. I know that x equals 2 is my other bound. So that means now I know my area then will be, let's see, it'll be this area right here. Maybe I'll do it in red here. It'll be this area right here I'm looking for. That right there will be my area. Okay, that's my area I'm wanting. Well, the area will be the integral from a to b. In this case, from 0 to, I figured this out, this is 2. That's what I did here. 
Now, which graph is above which in this area here, in this region? Which graph is above which? Do you notice the 2x is first? So I'll say it's 2x minus the x squared. It cannot be the opposite, okay? It must be the upper minus the lower. That's how we do this. So say the upper one minus the lower one. There we go. Well, then I just got to go ahead and figure this out. So let's do it. Um, what's the antiderivative of this? Let's see, it becomes 2x. Remember, this is a 1 right now, so it becomes a 2, and I divide by that same number. And then let's see, I have minus x squared becomes x to the power of, I have to grow it by 1, so it becomes 3 over 3. Don't forget to evaluate it from 0 to 2. Well, good news in some sense is that uh, I've got something canceling out. The 2's cancel out. That's nice. So now I really have to do then x squared minus x cubed over 3. And I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 2. So I keep going then. So the area is, let's see, I'll evaluate it at 2. So I got 2 squared minus 2 cubed over 3. I'll put that maybe in a square bracket. Minus... Well, this whole thing evaluated at 0, so 0 squared minus 0 cubed over 3. Good news. This whole thing cancels out, so that's kind of nice. That one's gone. So then I just got to figure out this. So let's keep going. Then. What's 2 squared? That's 4. Uh, let's see. Minus 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8. Well, that is over 3. So i got to do 4 minus 8 over 3. Well, I need a common denominator. I'll make them both over 3. So this one remains the same. This one here, i got to make it 12 over 3, because 12 divided by 3 is 4. So now i got 12 minus 8, which is 4. So my total answer, then my final answer, in fact, is just going to be uh, 4 over 3. And I'm done. Isn't that kind of awesome? So this is how I can do this without even a calculator. I know that this area right here is 4 over 3. Now, could you do this with a calculator? Of course you could. Uh, there's a couple ways to do it. I want to show you with other calculators first, the not TI Inspire way, because uh, there's, at least from what I'm aware, I don't know if the other calculators can do it, but this one right here at least. If you're not sure what to do, you want to do this, well, first graph each function as before. See which one is above which. You also need to find the intersection points. So it's basically what I've just done here. You would graph these, you'd find the intersection points, and figure out which one's above which. Then what you would do is you would make yourself a new function. So you make a new function that's just the top function minus the bottom function. So instead of graphing this and graphing this separately, I would do a graph of, hey, what is the graph of 2x minus x squared? That'll be a totally different shape. But I would do that one. I would do the integral of it, though, from 0 to 2. So that's basically what I'm saying is do a new graph of just the top function minus the bottom function and find that integral from a and b. Now, the TI Inspire is kind of neat. It can do something. I'm not sure if the other ones can do this. They might. But I thought this was pretty neat. Um, you can just graph each function like we did, like I talked about here. And you can just say, go ahead and give me the area between them. Uh, let me just show you that one. So I'll just do a new page, do a new graph. And I'll do uh, x squared. Boom. And I'll do 2x. So I just press tab to get a new one. And I'll say, give me 2x. Now I've got those two graphs like I sketched here before, except now it's actually accurate. I just did a quick, dirty, bad sketch here. This is what it really is. Now what I can do here is go to Menu, go to Analyze, and look very carefully. Instead of Integral, we have Bounded Area. So I can do that. And it says, where's your lower bound? Watch, I can move this, and I can say, do you notice it sort of sticks to this thing called Intersection Point? Do you notice that? So I'll click there. Upper bound, I'm going to bring it up to here, and you notice it's going to, oh, it says Intersection Point. There it is. And there we go. Do you notice it gave me 1.33 as my bounded area? And what is 1.33? Watch, what if I do 4 divided by 3? See? It's the same. So, I mean, you can do it with a calculator and kind of cheat. You can just do it by hand. It's actually not so bad. It's just a little bit of algebra. But there we go. That's how you can do these really crazy looking area between curves. Calculus is your friend. You just got to learn to do the upper graph minus the lower graph and do it from where they meet to where they meet. Ta-da!